identify all right can anybody identify hallelujah hallelujah my heart hallelujah hallelujah and it leaves my heart and it goes to my mind hallelujah and it leaves my mind and it turns into an action that means now my hand go up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my feet get happy because it's a praise that comes out of my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It comes from my heart. It's not uh, a mechanical praise. It's not something that I'm trying to show somebody that I ain't got. Hallelujah. Some folk trying to demonstrate something that they don't possess. But is there anybody in here that got to praise? Hallelujah. I mean, you got to praise. Hallelujah. Uh, now, now, some people may have come because they need to be in the midst of praise. You need to be in the midst of God. But I need to know how many folk that I have here that came with your praise you came with it you i, I want to know that you left home anybody you left home with it and i'm just waiting hallelujah until i get there because i got something that i gotta release into the atmosphere because god has been so good and not only that but this is an awesome day to celebrate because we're celebrating, hallelujah, Pentecost. Hallelujah. The Lord released his spirit back into the earth. Hallelujah. That's a shout right there. That's a shout. Hallelujah. That is a shout. Hallelujah. He says, one day I'm going to make it so that that, that is not just going to be about the, the, all you have as a human being to give. I'm going to fix it so that I'm a part of it. So God, I can imagine him looking down from glory as the fathers worshipped him and gave him glory. God says that's, that's real good, but I, I, I'm not in it. I'm not present. Hallelujah. That, that's from the action of, of the individual, from man. Yes, they're seeking after me. But one day I'm going to give them my spirit. Hallelujah. So I'm going to be present on the inside of them. Hallelujah. I thank God for his presence on today. Hallelujah. I thank God for his presence. For he has been a good and awesome God to us. And I want to see more demonstration of Pentecost as the service progress. Hallelujah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We got to see some more hands. We got to see some more, some more clapping. Hallelujah. We got to see, hear some singing with enthusiasm. Not just a song, but, but we're releasing a praise that only one is deserving of. Only one. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to impress you. Hallelujah. I hope you're not in trying to trying to impress me because if you are you 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 lost already hallelujah because i will not be impressed i'm only impressed by him hallelujah now we can all worship together hallelujah but i'm not impressed because there's only one and we thank god we welcome you today we are glad to see all your wonderful faces on this morning some that we haven't seen and we're glad to have you with us 
and we thank God for you and all of those that are viewing, whether you're viewing on Facebook, Zoom, YouTube, wherever you're viewing from, welcome to the Community Refuge Church on this morning. Uh, just buckle yourself, but we're going to have a high time. Anybody looking for a high time? Anybody looking to go higher? Hallelujah. Higher. We used to sing a song, let's go higher. Higher in the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to ask our uh, Elder Nicholson to come, and he's going to give us uh, our morning prayer in Jesus' name. As many as can, just stand with us. If you, if you could, please, ma'am, and please, sir, please stand. Amen. As hello, we begin to say this is a celebration. I said this is a celebration. Amen. Amen. You have your, the use of your activity of your limb this morning. You have a right to praise him, amen. Amen. I believe everybody got their legs this morning. Praise the Lord, praise him, amen. Amen, amen. So you have a right to praise him, amen. We come to give him glory this morning. We can come to give him praise because he's good. I said he's good and his mercy endures forever, amen. Despite how you feel this morning, he deserves your praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I didn't came. To, I didn't come to look at you this morning, but I come to give him glory this morning because he's been good. Amen. I said he's been good. Amen. Praise the Lord. He could allow you and I to sleep on as we lay down last night. But he gave us an opportunity to come to give him praise. Amen. I'm going to praise him this morning despite how I feel. Amen. I don't know how I look to you. Amen. But I come to praise him. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God, we bless you this morning. We honor you this morning, God. Because you are good, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, you are good. You are good. Amen. And I ask you in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. God, release. Amen. Your anointing this morning. That same anointing that able to break every yoke, oh, God. Oh, God, destroy the works of the enemy this morning. Help us this morning to realize why we're coming this morning. Amen. God, we could have been other places, but we came to give you glory. We came to give you all the honor this morning, oh, God. Oh, God, have your way this morning. Move this morning. I know you're here this morning, Lord, because, oh, God, you told us, amen, where there is two and three gathered in your name, you is in the midst of it. You are here, Lord. God, just release your spirit this morning. Release it in the name of Jesus. Touch someone this morning. Somebody this morning. Bodies is in pain, Lord. But, Lord, you are the healer this morning. The world don't believe it, Lord. But you are a healer, oh, God. Not only only as you are here, you are delivered this morning. Deliver this morning, amen. Break the yoke this morning. Destroy the works of the enemy, oh God. Set your children free, Lord Jesus. Oh God, I know you can. And I know you will this morning. Remember, oh God, the one gonna take you on this morning. By water baptism, oh God. God, I pray in Jesus' name. God, just trouble the water, Lord Jesus. Trouble the water, oh God. In the name of Jesus, send down your anointing, oh God. Send it down, oh God. One say, send it down in Jesus' name, amen. As we get our mind and our heart on one accord this morning, God, you want to come in. You wants to do something for us this morning. Help us, oh God. Help us, Lord. 
Help my brother this morning. Help my sister this morning. Oh God, to forget about their kills, oh God. And worship you, oh God. Cause one said, when the praises go up, oh, the blessing got to come down, oh God. And I pray this morning, oh God, everything we do this morning, let us do it to the glory and the heart of you this morning to worship you, oh God, in the beauty of holiness. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you this morning for the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Who's going to do it this morning? Oh God, I give you praise. I give you all the glory. Because you said, Lord Jesus, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, amen. Oh, God, bless us this morning. Bless us, oh, God. Bless us, oh, God. And make us a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Today. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, 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 there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all, not some, but all the house where they were. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all, not just one, hallelujah. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. And the word Amen. of God is blessed. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. It is Pentecost Sunday. I need to hear somebody make some noise in here. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We come to worship God this morning for he alone is worthy of all of our glory and of all of the honor. No goodness of our own. Hallelujah. He allowed us to see this morning and for this we are grateful. Brother Courtney was just playing a song on his heart. So we're going to sing that song. It says, praise him. That's what we come out to do. Amen. We come out to praise him. Praise him.
to that door please leave them whatever burdens you brought in here this is the place where you let it go whatever burdens whatever problems you brought in here let them go hallelujah please don't leave the way that you came hallelujah praise the lord everybody hallelujah welcome to community refuge church where our pastor and first lady is apostle fred rubin and lady Teresa rubin we give thanks to God for he alone is great and he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the way of announcements. Hallelujah. Thank God for our fast. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. Just a reminder that Tuesdays are our church fast days. You can join in and fast with us. You don't have nothing else to do. Fast with us on Tuesdays. Hallelujah. This Tuesday night Bible class, Bishop, uh, is a repeat. Is it a part two of what you taught last week, Bishop? Sir, it was good. So please join us on this coming Tuesday night with our pastor, Apostle Fred Rubin, at 7 o'clock. Be there and be on time in Jesus' name. Next Sunday for our education hour, it's a toss-up between Elder Williams, hallelujah, and Lady Bullock. So it'll be Elder Williams, praise God. We thank God. So next Sunday, our education hour will be taught by our own Elder Barry Williams. Next Sunday, Bishop and Lady Rubin will continue with our couple's ministry after church. Oh, you can be first Sunday this time? Well, praise God, y'all get a break. Okay. First Sunday will be our couple's ministry taught by Bishop and Lady Reuben. That's first Sunday after church. In the way of birthdays, we have little Ryan Goulburn born the second. I can never call. All right. There you go, baby. All right. 
Oh, he stood up and turned around. Hallelujah. All right. Well, come on, brother. Show us how you put you got on today. Come on now. Walk a little bit faster. All right now. He walking tall and straight, brother. Well, happy birthday to you. All right. Enjoy your day, all right? All right. Amen and amen. All right. Yeah, we got a, we got a minister coming up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Minister to the elder. Come on now. Let's pray for our babies. Pray for them in Jesus' name in all sincerity. Pray for them in Jesus' name. Uh, Sister Johnette, her birthday is on the 23rd of this month. So to Sister Johnette, she does the announcements and everything for Bishop when they have to go out. We thank God for Sister Johnette in Jesus' name. No bereavement, so I praise God for that. God is good. Yes, he is. We can give God a hand clap for that. No bereavement in the name of Jesus. We do have some guests here in the house. So when I call your name, if you would be so kind and not shy, just to please stand in Jesus' name. We have Mr. and Mrs. Woolfolk. They're from Manalapin, New Jersey. So if you would grace us with your amen, let's give them a love praise, Holly. Thank for them. I understand they just got married. So God bless you. Y'all can join the couples uh, thing that Bishop and Lady Ruth been doing just in time. Y'all made it just in time. Hallelujah for that. You're going to learn a whole lot. So you may be seated in Jesus' name. We have our brother Johnny L. Moore, Jr. You can stand. He's from Long Branch, New Jersey. We thank God for you. And he brought two honored guests with him. Miles Anthony Moore. You may stand, my brother. Thank you. And Ava Cruz. Come on. Let's give him some CRC love praise. We thank God for you. You're only a stranger once, all right? You're only a visitor once. So next Sunday, you won't be a visitor. You won't be a stranger. Just come on in and worship with us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We are the church that believes in the power of hallelujah, hallelujah. And prayer works, you all. Prayer works. No matter what it is that you need, prayer works. Amen. And we see the names on our prayer list. So we will ask you, just if you look at those names and you see someone that's not, you know someone that normally is here and not here, for whatever reason they are out, I ask that you pray for them in Jesus' name. We, got, we remember Elder Bullock, he's home, not well. The Tuckers, we're going to continue to pray for them. And everyone else that's not here, we ask that you pray for them in Jesus' name. And one last thing, we have a huge, huge congratulations to a college graduate. To Sister Brielle Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for our young people going to college and graduating. I thank God for that. She's graduating from, now I may not pronounce it right, Cabrini University with a Bachelor's of Science in Exercise Science. God bless her. How she worked that, y'all. Exercise Science. So if you have some aches and some, you know, some pains, you can talk to Sister Brielle. She may be able to give you uh, some pointers in Jesus' name. Please govern yourselves accordingly, Elder Williams. We praise the Lord on this morning, on this Pentecost Sunday. And I just want to read that this day is about the power of the Holy Spirit falling into the earth. It was not a, a event that was done in silence. It was done in the open so that those that were at Jerusalem knew and was able to learn what was happening. And that event left from Jerusalem, and we see it in Samaria. The Bible says that Samaria received the same word, but it said that, but the Holy Ghost had not yet fallen on them, but they were only baptized. And so when they sent the, uh, the apostles down, they laid hands on them. And when they laid hands on them, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So some talks about Acts as a narrative book. They say you can't 
you just can't decide by you know the narrative that that means that's the way it's supposed to be. So they say that you know now that means you can receive the Holy Ghost, you know, or the Holy Spirit, and there be no uh, evidence or no sign. But when God says in Ephesians that you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Anytime you see promise, you're talking about Joel. And so when you get the promise, it is a seal or a mark. Now, I want to know how many of y'all ever seen a seal or a mark that you, you, you didn't know. When, 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 when the government you sends a letter, they have their seal. It's stamped so that you know where it comes from. The kings back in the day, they had a seal. When they, they wrote the letter, they sealed it so that, you know, it, you know that it's from me and we can tell whether you open it or not. So God says that we are sealed with the promise of the Holy Ghost so that when we get it, somebody is going to know we got it. Hallelujah. And that ain't necessarily by tongues, but, but you'll know the initial sign is that something happens, and, and, and it's not the gift of tongues. Everybody want to say uh, that they ain't got the Holy Ghost. They said, uh, you want to receive your gift. No, 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 that's not what it was talking about. Because in the 19th chapter of Acts, they found some disciples. They says, uh, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost? They didn't say, do you have your gift of tongues? They said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we don't know nothing about it. He tells them, how were you baptized? So how, how, you was, how were you baptized? Wait a minute, because the baptism comes with the promise of the Holy Ghost. It says that repent and baptize and you shall receive not a gift of tongue, but the gift of the Holy Ghost, which will come with tongues. And they say, we haven't heard about that. He says, when they told him that we're baptized, to John's baptism. He said, well, John only baptized unto repentance, telling you to look for the one. And when they heard this, the Bible says that they were baptized now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he laid his hands on them, that they received the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, now out of their belly begin to flow the rivers of living waters which was he talking about was the Holy Ghost. They had received the Holy Ghost. And I can understand this narrative thing, yeah. Uh, you know, when, when the disciples uh, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost fell, nobody laid no hands on nobody. The Holy Ghost just fell. And so, but then uh, Samaria, they laid hands. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the 10th chapter of Acts, the Holy Ghost falls. So the Holy Ghost will fall on you. And if it don't fall on you, we can call Bishop and he can lay hands on you. Hallelujah. Just trying to give you a picture of the order. When the Holy Ghost didn't fall, they sent to Jerusalem for the apostles. It says, and when they came down, they laid hands on them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So he may fall on you, hallelujah, before the service is over. Hallelujah. And if he hasn't fallen on you, by the time Bishop makes the altar call, hallelujah, you can have him lay hands on you, and if you want it, hallelujah, if you desire to have it, hallelujah, he will fill you too with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let me give God a hand praise as we celebrate the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. The presence of the power of God in the earth. Hallelujah. That came with signs and wonders. And we praise God for that in Jesus' name. We're going to ask our ushers to give you direction as you come to receive our tithes and offering in Jesus' name. And those, those of you that haven't given your Pentecostal offering, you may give it at this time. 
Amen. Let us come under the direction of the usher in Jesus' name. right now. I hear the sound. 
I hear the sound. Oh, glory. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of Pentecost right now. It was ringing way in my soul last night about 2 o'clock. And I'm kept saying, now I need to go to sleep. I got to go to church tomorrow. But the sound was ringing in my soul. Somebody going to get the Holy Ghost. Hey, somebody's going to get the Holy Ghost. Because I hear the sound. As Elder William said, it happened. It fell on him. It's going to fall on you. I talk about that. I talk about that. What can I do but praise the Lord today? What can I do but tell him, Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. My mind did go back to Bishop Robinson. Uh, we visited his church. This is our nephew. He came down the aisle one Pentecost Sunday, laid hands upon him, and he received a gift of the Holy Ghost. I am so glad to see each and every you. And you know, I preached a message a couple of weeks ago. Something good is about to happen. And that led into our fast, it led into our prayer, it led into our reaching out. And uh, I mentioned in the 1030 prayer, Deacon Brown, that all last week, every time I saw a cookie, every time I saw a chocolate bar, Every time I saw those Klondike bars, I let them alone. Because some things come only through prayer and fasting. Some things come only. You just ought to say that word only. But with prayer and fasting, all things are possible. What are you talking about, Pastor? There's some demons that you can say, Jesus, 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 all you want. They're just going to look at you. There's a hierarchy, praise the Lord, in the demonic kingdom, just as there is in the spiritual kingdom. And some of those highfalutin demons, they don't pay attention just because you say Jesus. But when you fast and when you pray, that anointing comes upon you, then you can say in the name of Jesus, and they got to run and hide. So we've been fasting, we've been praying, we've been expecting, and I'm looking for something good to happen. Now look around the room, CBC, anybody that doesn't look excited, somebody that doesn't look like got a spirit of anticipation, you, you ought to just kind of shake that person gently. And tell them what's wrong. Something good is about to happen. Praise the Lord. Something wonderful, something wonderful, something wonderful, something wonderful. Now, we often go in prayer and I ask, you know, do you have a need? Do you have a this? Do you have a that? But I don't want that kind of prayer today. I want a praise prayer. Prayer that just offers up to Jesus Christ. I thank you. I thank you because I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. I'm going to thank you because you gave me a promise, and I know that promise is going to come to pass. Come on, everybody, stand with me. And all I want you to do is to praise God. I want you to lift your voice and begin to thank him, begin to praise him, begin to magnify him. For he made a promise. He made a promise. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Jesus, I thank you today. Jesus, I praise you today. Jesus, I magnify you. Send your touch. Send your anointing. Send the power. Send the glory. 
Oh, send the Holy Ghost, send the fire. Yes, we'll praise you, we'll praise you, we'll praise you, we'll praise you, we'll praise you. Come on and praise him. Step out by faith. You've been praying, you've been back. Step out by faith and tell Jesus thank you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now I want you to walk around the room and find as many folks as you can and tell them it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Walk around the room and just tell some folks it's going to happen. Go. Going to happen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Something good is about to happen. Something good. Lord, I say thank you. Something good. I try, give us, give us some music, magicians. I try, give us some music. That's right. Come on and pray. This is Pentecost Sunday. going to be looking at the first chapter of the book of Acts, beginning at verse 3, but the finance team wants me to remind you that the cash app has changed, and the new cash app is C Refuge C, with the dollar sign. Now, if you used the old one and got the money back, that was not God blessing you. You're supposed to return it to C, Refuge C. Some folks, you know, well, they look at their bank account and say, where did this money come from? 
Well, it's not your money. You gave it to the Lord. Don't take it back. C, refuge C. I don't know if they've changed it yet. On the, oh, it's up there right now. Some of the old flyers on the emails, they need to be adjusted too. But C, refuge C, Lady Rubin. The Lord did not give you that money back. C, refuge C. Lady Rubin pays cash. She, she puts her tithes and offering and lays it out in cash. Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse number 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. I want to use for thought a question that perhaps runs through your mind from time to time. Have I waited in vain? As men and women of faith, praying saints, Holy Ghost filled saints, saints that love God, we have a level of faith. When God speaks something into our spirit, when there's a promise that comes, we believe that it's going to take place. The one challenge that we have is that we put our time schedule on when we think it's going to happen. I was looking at the day of Pentecost, and it's the Feast of Weeks, the grain, harvest grain celebration. The first recording of that was some 1,500 years prior. And when the prophet Joel spoke about pouring out the spirit upon all flesh, sons and daughters shall prophesy, that was some 850 years prior to this. You have been waited 1,500 years. You have been waited 850 years. Something about understanding the makings of God. When Jesus spoke these words to the apostles, they asked him, are you getting ready to restore Israel back to its power and authority? Even after the three years of walking with Jesus, the mind stayed on the natural, the political, even after seeing him work miracles, the mind seemed to just deal with Israel being restored. He said something interesting to them. It's not for you to know that which is in the hands of God. Those things that are in God's power, you don't need to understand that. Moses didn't understand what was being written some 1,500 years ago. Joel did not fully grasp what he was told to prophesy some 850 years ago. But then he went on to tell him, but ye shall receive power. Power to get the job done. Power to be my witnesses. Power to let folks know that he died, he was buried, and he rose again. When we look at the Pentecostal story, we need to remind ourselves that the day of Pentecost was not the first observation, first celebration, I should say, of Pentecost. It was a one of the three Hebrew festivals, the Passover, and then in the fall, the festival of booths, the tabernacles. This was a 
Harvest Festival. But each one was to commemorate some part of the history, some part of what God took Israel through, some part. And it was letting them know through the commandments and direction that there are certain things I want you to do. One of the interesting things that on each of the three festivals, every devout Jew was to go to Jerusalem to bring an offering and to celebrate the Lord. To go to Jerusalem and be there to observe. Praise the Lord, in this case, Pentecost. So here we're seeing two stories being blended together. We're seeing God speaking to his apostles and disciples and followers and, and telling them there's a promise coming your way. Wait on it. Something coming that's going to endow you with, will take you beyond the, the natural into the spiritual realm. It will guide you. It will lead you. It will direct you. It will bring thoughts back to you when you don't know what to say. The Spirit will tell you what to say. And when it's right, the Spirit will also tell you to be quiet. I was going to say shut up, but I thought it would be more polite. Spirit is something that each one of us needs. It's not an optional thing. It's not a maybe thing. It's something that each one of us needs to have that authority, that power. Have not the Spirit of God, the Lord said, you're none of his. That's the word. That's the word. Here we are, these men and women being told to go to the upper room, to go to Jerusalem and wait to receive this. A couple of things I want you to understand. They had never been to community refuge and heard somebody speak in tongues. They didn't quite fully grasp hold what it meant to receive the Holy Ghost. They never saw anybody, never heard about it. It was something new to them. They also didn't know just how long they were going to wait. Now, Jesus did give them a clue. He said, in not many days hence. How many times have you waited for something that not many days seemed to go into weeks, into months, into years? So here they are not knowing what to expect and not knowing when it's going to happen. Now I suppose that during that period of waiting, some folks started to doubt. Not everybody has your level of faith. Some folks started to question, is it going to happen? What is it that he was talking about when he said the promise of the Father? What was he talking about when he spoke about receiving the Spirit of God? What was he talking about? Let me take a quick survey. Has anybody ever got to the place as you're waiting on something that yesterday you knew was going to happen? But today you're asking, am I waiting in vain? Let me see the hand of the honest folks. Yes, this occurs in the life of every child of God. And I go back to the reality. Our time is not God's time. God's time is not our time. But what brings us together is when, while we're waiting, we don't yield our praise. While we're waiting, we don't stop believing. While we're waiting, we refuse to let the enemy enter in with doubt and fear. We refuse to let the enemy tell us it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. When God makes a promise, it shall come to pass. When God makes a promise, it is going to come to pass. Now, it's a fact we promise ourselves some things and try to sound like God. Those things might happen. They might not happen. But when it's God himself, and so he told these men, he told these women, I want you to go to the upper room and wait for the promise. First day, they took care of business. They had to have a, an election. 
Praise the Lord. But their elections were done differently than our elections. They prayed and asked God, which of these two men have you chosen? Lord, you know the hearts of these men. Which of these two men? They cast a lot. And Judah's replacement was intact. Then they started to just begin to, to pray and to praise God. They began to talk to the Lord in such a way that everything they said and did was elevating their relationship and knowledge of God. I've always been fascinated because when the Holy Ghost did come, the Bible said, as they were sitting. Praise the Lord. You know, you can pray any position. You can stand, you can sit, you can kneel, you can walk, you can lay prostrate. It's not the position, not the physical position, but the position of the heart. But here they are going through this day and that day and the next day, wondering some. And I suppose as we got to the fifth and sixth day, there was some additional folks asking the question, have I waited in vain? Have I waited for naught? And of course, when you're a saved person and you don't want to say that God made a mistake. You try to picture it this way. Was it really God that was speaking? Did I really hear God speaking? But you know, we're blessed because we got the written word that backs up everything that he tells us. We've got the written word that said, by my stripes are you here. We've got the written word that declares, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We got the written word that tells us if I abide in him and let his word abide in me, I could ask anything. Oh, I feel like shouting again. Feel like praising God right now. Because in the midst of the doubting, God showed himself in another way. There's times that our faith is not at the place that it ought to be. Anybody ever been there? A faith has dwindled, a faith has become weak. But in the midst of that weakened faith, God shows us I'm not limited to what you believe. I try to work with you. I try to use your faith to bring miracles and blessings, but I'm not limited. Just because you don't believe doesn't mean I'm going to change who I am, saith the Lord. Just because you can't see the impossible doesn't mean I'm not going to work the impossible. Just because you're doubting doesn't mean I'm not going to bless the way I promised to bless. And so as they're sitting there, it's on the 10th day, they're sitting there praising. Some I'm sure would doubt, but yet praising God. But when the Bible said they came to this one accord, when the Bible said they were at one place and one accord, it was vital that they come to that place. But the Pentecost could not come until it was Pentecost. I better explain that. God not only wanted them to be blessed, but he wanted the entire world to know that he's a savior. Wanted the entire world to know that I have something called the Holy Ghost. He wanted the entire world to know that I have sheep of another fold. And so when the day of Pentecost came, the city was filled with devout Jews from everywhere. They came from the north, they came from the south, they came from the east, they came from the west. Praise the Lord, you had all these devout Jews that understood the word. Why was that important? Because when Peter got up to preach and they talked about the prophet Joel, they didn't say what she's talking about. They said, oh, that's what Joel was referring to. And they're sitting there like you're sitting. And all of a sudden, praise the Lord, here comes something they call like fire. Here comes cloven tongues like as fire, and it sits upon each and every one of them. They begin to get up, praise the Lord. They begin to get up, and they start praising God. Brother John gets up, and Deacon Brown gets up. But they're not talking their native language. Praise the Lord. John's talking an African tongue. And 
praise the Lord, Deacon Brown's talking some Spanish or some Italian. They're not talking their native tongue, but they're talking these other languages. You know, there's a difference between other tongues and unknown tongues. They begin to speak the praises of God. And every bit of doubt, every bit of fear, every bit of apprehension has left them. They begin talking about the wondrous works of the Lord. And this is a message to you and I. When you start wondering, have I waited in vain? You ought to know the answer is a definite no. God has set a time to bless you. When he told the disciples, not in many days hence. What was he saying? You don't know when I'm going to do it, but know it shall be done. You don't know how I'm going to do it, but know it shall be done. You don't know how, when, where, or how, but be convinced. When I give a promise, save the Lord, when my word goes out of my mouth, it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that very thing. And when I spoke two weeks ago and said, something good is about to happen. I don't care what you think or what I think. When God said something good is going to happen, it's got to come to pass. Satan can lift his ugly head and try to stop it, but it shall come to pass. And so I'm looking for somebody. Let me look over here by Lady Ruby. Something good is about to happen. Let me go over here and talk to Cecil. Something good is about to happen. Let me look at Mother Devereaux and remind her something good. Mother Harper, something good. Sister Prophet, something good. Sister Miller, something good. But now I need to touch and agree with somebody. I need to feel the presence. I need to feel the anointing of faith in the house. Anybody believe that you haven't waited in vain? Can I find somebody that God been talking to? God been speaking to? Can I find anybody that the Lord said, go into the house of God and just wait on me. And while you're waiting, praise me. Magnify me. While you're waiting, give me the glory. While you're waiting, tell me thank you. While you're waiting, tell everybody, he cannot lie. He shall bless. Musician. Can I get you to play something that has a message that declares it shall happen, it will happen. In fact, I believe it so much that I'm going to stop saying it shall happen. But by faith, I said by faith, I'm declaring healing. Deliverance, salvation. I'm declaring every breakthrough. I'm declaring the reception of the Holy Spirit. I'm claiming a backslider coming back to praise and to worship. I'm claiming. A closer walk. I said a closer walk for every saint. I'm claiming God speaking to somebody and reminding them I've been knocking. I've been knocking. I'm claiming that that same saint that's been waiting for another day. We're going to get up, go to the spiritual door, open that door, tell Jesus, come on in, sup with me, talk with me, bless me, heal me. Saint, I've been trying to tell you can praise yourself into victory. You can thank God into victory. 
you can magnify into victory. If I get just two or three, then know you're not waiting in vain. Just stand up with me and start thanking him. If I can find just two or three, stand up with me and let's praise him together. Lord, I thank you. As on the day of Pentecost, God is getting ready to take that Holy Spirit, let it sit upon us. It's like fire. It's not just shut up in my bone, but it's on me. It's in my hands. It's in my feet. It's all over me. And I got to praise him. Maybe you can't shout, but you can open up your mouth. And even if you don't feel like it, if you just by faith praise him, somebody over here, let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. Not just Jesus, but thank you. Thank you. Somebody over here, even in your doubt, even in your fear, lift your voice. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Give them the glory. I feel something is about to happen. Everybody sit down. I feel like something is about to happen. I feel like we're in one place. Pretty much I want to call and I can feel something. I hear something. It sounds like a rushing mighty wind. It sounds like the Holy Ghost is getting ready to fall. And I feel something. It's on me. I feel it. It's not just the music. It's God. And it's making me get up and begin to praise him. Begin to tell everybody, he's been good to me. When I was on my way to hell, he died for me. He shed his blood for me. Went to hell for me. But on the third day, he got up all power in his hand. And he walked around earth for 40 days infallible proof not just being seen by one but 500 at the same time not just by one but 12 apostles told the one that doubted put your hand in the hole in my side walked around for 40 days and as it got ready to ascend he said all right go to the Jerusalem go to the upper room and wait Saints, I'm getting ready to tell everybody he is my savior he is my savior. Anybody want to testify with me? He's my savior. Apostle, spread the word. Elder Williams talked about those in the upper coast of Ephesus. Paul went up to them.
asked him, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You believe that he's God. You believe he's the Savior. Have you received yet? They looked at him. Don't know what you're talking about. Holy Ghost, what's that? Paul said, how were you baptized? They said, unto John baptism. He said, that was yesterday's message. John baptized in water unto repentance. But John said, there's one coming after me that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Why fire? When you got fire, you can't sit still. When you got fire, you got to move. When you got fire, you got to lift your voice and say thank you. They said, tell me more. Paul said, let me baptize you again. They went to the water. They were dipped, put under in Jesus' name. And as elder said, he laid hands on them. And they began to speak in other, other tongues. They begin to signify the same Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Same Holy Ghost that the Gentiles, the same Holy Ghost, it's mine. Somebody testify with me. It's mine. It's mine. Oh, thank you. But every promise that I'm still waiting on. Thinking about every promise that the enemy wants to tell me it's not going to happen. But I've got news for that devil. I have not waited in vain. I want to find somebody else that's been waiting on something. I want you to stand with me. I know God been good to you. But there's something you're waiting on. It might be in your own life. To be set free. To be healed. To be delivered. Could be spiritual. Could be physical. Could be natural. What you're waiting on is for somebody else's life. Praying for a family member. Praying for a community person. Praying for a co-worker. Wives praying for husband. Husband praying for wives. Parents praying for children. Preached a message years ago. It was entitled, Satan, Not in My House. Not in My House. God promised me that it would keep my children, our children, saved and close to God. Yes, the devil tries to fight, but by his promise I testify, not in my house. God has honored that. And I believe that some of you have been praying that type of prayer. You're starting to wonder, have I waited in vain? As those in the upper room found out, when the time is right, 
Nothing can stop God. When time is right, no demon, no self-doubt, no opposition can stop God. And I just believe that this is a predetermined day. For those that have enough faith to receive what God has for you. Some cases it'll be manifested today. In others, the manifestation is about to happen. How many parents crying for their children, grandparents crying for their land? God has power, the authority to grant you here today have never been baptized in the name of the Lord never received the gift of the Holy Spirit I don't want you to come seeking I want you to come receiving it's the gift of the Holy Ghost I don't have to beg elder to give me a gift that he has for me got to be willing to receive it. Those of you that have been waiting for whatever it might be, I don't want you to come seeking. I want you to come and receive what God has for you. Give us a song, praise team. Brethren, come and assist me. Let us receive Honor and power unto the Lord our God. Say it again, so hallelujah, hallelujah. Salvation and glory, honor and power, honor and power unto the And on behalf of Lady Ruben, myself, and the entire Community Refuge Church of Christ congregation, we welcome you to our morning worship service. Yes, it's exciting to have you with us today. Now, of course, it'd be even greater if you were here with us live. You can feel the anointing viewing, but there's a double portion, a double anointing when you're here in person. Let me tell you just a little bit about Community Refuge. Yes, it's a place where God's love prevails. It's a place where prayers are prayed. It's a place where lives are changed. And as much as we do believe in the power of prayer, let me repeat that, the power of prayer, we invite you to send your prayer requests to us. Email me at fredrubin1 at verizon.net and your requests are going to be my requests. Yes, as we go before the Lord, we're going to be calling your name and your request before the Lord. Also, I have to take time out just to thank you for your prayers and for your support. They mean so much to us. They encourage us. And certainly, your financial support allows us to do those things that God would have us to do as we work together to seek to fulfill his will in our lives. Yes, thank you for being with us. Keep us in prayer. As we pray for you and don't forget we love you and appreciate you pastor Reuben
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Can you encourage somebody that might not have your level of faith? Tell them your waiting has not been in vain. I'm on everyone that's praying for a family member. Just to remind yourself, my waiting has not been in vain. Everyone waiting for healing, my waiting. You know, I, I could just do the benediction, but God, the Lord's walking around. I ran my mouth trying to get the right words to say. The Lord himself is walking around right now. He's talking to people. I can just imagine what he's saying. I heard your cry. I've seen your tears. I've not ignored you. I just waited for the right time. But as I'm saying that, I'm hearing those words. That Jesus told his disciples, in not many days, hence. In not many days, hence. More family. I don't know how you've been dealing with the Lord. But he sure put his hand on you, all three today. Everybody has a right time. But I'm going to keep those words in my spirit. In not many days hence. Lady Ruben, you better come over here so I stop running my mouth. We're going to have a bite to eat, some of us. we got a van out there. We're traveling to Mount Vernon. Some folks, you know, kind of surprised. But this is the way we always used to do it. And as you said, then we come back have night service. Well, we're not coming back for night service. But they invited me years ago when I canceled out. And when they invited me this time. Now, I'm glad I didn't realize it was Pentecost because I'm kind of happy that it is Pentecost. So we can just celebrate with them. All right. Everybody that's ready to be dismissed, stand up. You can't leave by if you're still sitting down, but if you can, stand up. And I'm going to look Lady Ruben in the eyes and say something good about to happen. And not many days hence. God bless you. Find a couple other folks. Talk to the Moore family. Congratulate this young married couple of nine days, Mr. and Mrs. Wolf.